This screencast is looking at 2.2.13. Describe the cardiovascular adaptations resulting from endurance exercise training. So we need to limit these, or are expected to limit these, to an increased in left ventricular volume, which essentially means that we've got an increased stroke volume which in turn will mean that we end up with a lower resting and exercise heart rate, but that exercise heart rate is for sub maximal activity. And to also consider increased capillarization and increased arteriovenous oxygen difference. Now, Although I will explain that in the screencast, I think that we will probably need a little session in class as such to really um, understand arteriovenous oxygen difference. So here, looking at heart size, due to aerobic training, Endurance athletes develop a larger left ventricle. So when we look at hypertrophy of the heart to aerobic activity, it is a larger left ventricle. Because our left ventricle um, pumps blood to our working muscles, if we can pump more blood per beat, theoretically, if we look at the cardiac output, equation, cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. If we increase our stroke volume, then at any given heart rate, we would see an increase in cardiac output. Now at rest or sub-maximal activity, we only require a certain amount of oxygen. So if the amount of oxygen at rest or submaximal activity, um, the requirement doesn't change, therefore um, what we require is the same, but stroke volume has increased Therefore, to maintain our cardiac output, heart rate can decrease. Now, that's why at rest or submaximal activity, our heart rate will be less than what it was for training. Now, it doesn't ask about cardiac output. However, as we just saw, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. So when looking at maximal work, where our cardiac output will be as much as possible, our stroke volume has increased, so we have a higher vital capacity. We can see that Stroke volume will have increased, our max heart rate will be very similar, so therefore cardiac output will increase at maximal activity. Again, from what we've been saying before with resting or submaximal work, we only require a certain amount of oxygen, so cardiac output for those activities won't change. Stroke volumes increase, so it's our heart rate that will decrease at those intensities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so arteriovenous oxygen difference. This is the difference between the oxygen content in arterial blood and venous blood. 
Now, a way in which I remember this is if we actually look at the abbreviation for arteriovenous oxygen difference, or AVO2 difference. So we have the oxygen concentration in the arteries minus the oxygen concentration in the veins. So arteries minus veins, so with respect to oxygen concentration. I'm just going to skip the next little bit of the text and have a look at the diagram. So here at rest or during exercise, arterial blood oxygen concentration 19 millilitres of oxygen per 100 mil of blood. Now, some texts have it as 19, some has it as 20 mil. During rest, the oxygen concentration in the venules, 13 millilitres of oxygen per 100 millilitres of blood. So, if we start off with 19, we end up with 13, it means that we have used 6 millilitres of oxygen per 100 mil of blood. So going to our AVO2 difference, arterial minus venous oxygen, arterial 19 minus venial 16, whoops, minus minus 13 equals 6, so an AVO2 difference of 6. Now, during exercise, venial oxygen concentration could be as little as 4 millilitres. So here, we would have an AVO2 difference of 19 in the arteries, in the venules, 4. So 19 minus 4 is 15. So the AVO2 difference being 15. So the greater the AVO2 diff, we can infer the higher the intensity of activity because more oxygen is being utilised. So this is similar but from the other another text where it has 20 mil uh, with respect to oxygen concentration in the arterial blood. But this is looking at AVO2 difference between trained and untrained. So here, suggesting that in an untrained person that the oxygen concentration in the venule is 8 millilitres of oxygen per 100 mil of blood. And here, 2 for a trained. So the trained athlete is able to use much more oxygen. In fact, according to this, they can use 6 mil of oxygen per 100 mil blood more than the untrained person. Now the last thing that we look at here is an increase in capillarization. So blood vessels form around three areas, although only two are listed in this text, we have an increase in capillarization around our lungs, our skeletal muscle, 
and around our heart. Kind of like cardiac. So an increase in the density of our lung capillary network means that we have an increased surface area for gaseous exchange, meaning that greater amount of O2 will enter the bloodstream. We have an increase of capillary density around our skeletal muscle, meaning that we have an increase in surface area for oxygen to diffuse into the muscle so hence increasing oxygen delivery to the working muscle we have an increase in capillarization or capillary density around our heart increase surface area which increases oxygen delivery to the heart so it itself can work more efficiently if we have an increase in oxygen delivery we can increase our oxygen use, which means we can work at a higher aerobic intensity, meaning that we get a performance advantage. This is a table other than capillarization that um, summarizes the chronic adaptations to Cardio, cardiovascular adaptations to aerobic activity worth pausing and having a look at.